Howdy, it's Kyle talking about regions in the U.S., what we call them and how we define them. Many non-Americans will often hear terms such as Midwest or South and wonder which parts of the country that refers to or will see a map and wonder why certain places are or are not considered part of that region. And also there's some disagreement amongst Americans about which places are or are not part of that certain area. So in this video, I'm going to talk about these regions, which places are or are not part of it, and also some of the disagreements that we might have. I'm going to start by talking about New England, which is the northeastern corner of the U.S. This is the easiest region in the country to define as it consists of the entirety of these six states and these six states only. All of the other regions that I'll be talking about have some aspects that transcend state lines, but not New England. Going down the coast, the next region is the Mid-Atlantic. Generally speaking, this refers to the part of the country south of New England and north of the south. If you're talking just state lines, then all of New York is part of the Mid-Atlantic region, although much of upstate New York is farther north than much of New England. And Pennsylvania is usually considered part of the Mid-Atlantic region, even though it is not a coastal state. Sometimes you will see Virginia and West Virginia included in the term Mid-Atlantic, especially the area around the Chesapeake Bay in Virginia. The coastal part of this region is part of the Northeast Megalopolis, and sometimes when people are using the term Mid-Atlantic, they're using it to refer to the part of the Megalopolis between New York and Washington. But this region is difficult to define by state lines, so if you go down into greater detail, you can see what the Mid-Atlantic region might look like if you're going at the county level. And when people use the term Northeast, they're usually referring to the combination of both New England and the Mid-Atlantic states. Going down the coast, the next region is the southeast. There are multiple ways to define the southeast, but I've always used a term to reference the parts of the south that are more coastal oriented, but also the ones that are the most southeastern, so that would include just these states here. However, many folks would extend southeast to include Virginia, Tennessee, and Mississippi. But you'll also hear the term simply the south. And for me, the south encompasses the southeast, as well as the Appalachians, as well as the south central part of the country. A lot of people wouldn't put West Virginia in the south, but for me, most of the people in the state live in the southern half of the state, so I do consider it southern. There's also some debate whether or not Texas, Oklahoma, or Kentucky are southern states. So here's a more exclusive look at the south when looking at the state level. Sometimes you'll even see the South whittle down to not include Virginia and Florida. And these states here, I guess you could call the heart of the South. And this is also the part of the country where much of our popular music originated from. Whether it be rock and roll or R&B that derives from blues and jazz, this is where it all came from. But just like the other regions, it's really hard to define the South simply by using state boundaries. So here's a map that I created showing what might be considered the south if you go outside of state boundaries and use county lines. I've included about one half of Texas, but about two-thirds of the population of the state lives in that one half of the area of the state. Western and southwest Texas is defined a little more by a Mexican culture, or not so much by eastern and southeastern. Central and south Florida is often associated with Cuban, Puerto Rican, and other Caribbean influences. And perhaps controversially, I have also removed southeastern Louisiana from this map. Just like west and southwest Texas, central and south Florida, southeastern Louisiana was a little more influenced by French, Cajun, and Creole culture. But I can certainly see myself being in the minority to not include New Orleans and the surrounding area as part of the south in terms of southern culture. But my take on it is if Miami and Tampa are not southern, then neither is New Orleans. The region called the Midwest is generally considered to be these states. And this region in and of itself consists of two different subregions, the Great Lakes and the Northern Great Plains. Many non-Americans are often confused when they hear the term Midwest and they see it's these states. But the term Midwest came to be used at a time when the U.S. was basically just the states along the Atlantic coast. So there was the Far West over the Rocky Mountains and this was the Midwest. And the name has stuck through all these years, even though most of Michigan and Indiana and all of Ohio are in the eastern time zone. Part of the Midwest identity is large industrial cities, many of which are referred to as Rust Belt nowadays. Rural areas are known for growing of grains and animal feed. And there's also a lot of water with the Great Lakes, the Upper Mississippi River, the Upper Ohio, and the Missouri Rivers. 
But similar to the South, the Midwest cannot be defined simply by state lines. Looking more at the county level, northern Missouri goes with the Midwest and southern Missouri goes with the South. Most of Kentucky would be considered southern, but the big population center around Louisville and the Cincinnati suburbs is more Midwestern. And once you get to the western part of the Dakotas and Nebraska, you're really getting out into the west. And speaking of the west, from a state boundary standpoint, it would be these 11 states. These are generally defined as the states from the Rocky Mountains to the Pacific Ocean. A big part of what makes the West the West are the mountains. This is also the driest part of the country and the part of the country most susceptible to wildfires. But kind of like how when sometimes people use the term Mid-Atlantic to just mean those megalopolis cities, sometimes when people use the term West, they're talking about the big open areas, the big wilderness, and the open skies. So if you use that criteria and you break it down at the county level, this might be what you would call the West. Now, of course, there are big cities within this, Denver, Salt Lake, Las Vegas, Phoenix, but overall, this is the big wide open areas, just the giant skies, huge wilderness, and not the big population centers on the coast. But using this criteria of big open spaces and very few people, the western parts of North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas would be called western. But the west itself can be divided up between the northwest and the southwest. When people are talking about the northwest, it's usually just the two states, Oregon and Washington. However, sometimes you'll see Idaho and Montana considered part of the northwest. And as a result, sometimes you'll hear the term Pacific Northwest to mean specifically just Oregon and Washington. I think you can use the state lines to define this region, although I can understand why people might not want to put the eastern third of Montana as part of the northwest. In terms of the southwest, it's generally referred to as these six states. And these are defined more by open desert and not so green landscapes. It's also a part of the country that was heavily influenced by Mexican culture. And as a result, many people use the term southwestern to refer to the part of the country that has had a lot of Mexican influence and therefore would include Texas. But just like all the other regions, it's really hard to define this region by state lines. So by going at the county level, you can see that it wouldn't include the northernmost parts of California, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado. For Texas, it's basically just the counties near the Mexican border, and I did put San Antonio with the southwest. And another way of thinking about it is if you go to this part of the country, you'll see many towns named San or Santa, this or that. Alaska and Hawaii would be their own regions, but I think the two states that are most difficult to put into a region are Oklahoma and West Virginia. Oklahoma is where the West, the Midwest, and the Southeast all come together, and West Virginia is where the Midwest, the Northeast, and the Southeast come together. So in summary, although we might use terms Northeast, Southeast, Midwest, or whatever, the region isn't always just defined by the cardinal direction. Although the names do generally fall within that part of the country, for example, you wouldn't call the southwestern part of the U.S. the quote-unquote South. And now you know that even though Utah and Colorado are Midwest, they're not part of the Midwest. So if you're a non-American wonder what parts of the country these terms refer to, hopefully this video was able to help you out a little bit. So that's my look at names for regions in the U.S. It can be pretty complicated and there's going to be some disagreement amongst people, but there are some general guidelines that you can follow to help define these areas. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography. I'm talking about cities and counties and states and ranking things in all kinds of different categories and talking about cross-country road trips. I'm a bit of a nerd, so everything comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to thank my superior patrons for their support. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out my Patreon page and sign up there. You can also purchase a pin for the viewer pin map, but I'll update occasionally. But thank you for supporting the channel.